I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the ethical responsibilities of lawyers in responding to online criticism. This is for my professional responsibility uh, class. And really what I wanna talk about is a pretty new or recent ABA ethics opinion, uh, opinion 496 that was released in January of 2021. And just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, think about Yelp reviews for restaurants. And um, we have People post Yelp reviews about law firms and lawyers, and they use other platforms as well. There's a site called Avo um, that's all about lawyers where people post reviews of their experiences with lawyers and so forth, and other sites that are either lawyer specific or are general for all types of professional services and, um, and businesses that are open to the public. And what happens is a, an unhappy, maybe former client post a negative review about the lawyer. The lawyer wasn't any good. The lawyer overcharged me. The lawyer didn't return my phone calls. Um, the lawyer lost my case. And I think they're complete, uh, completely incompetent or something like that. And if you've ever had this happen to you, you know, it hurts, it's embarrassing. And sometimes people say things that are completely unfair or even untrue. And so now we've really only had this type of thing where people could post like customer reviews online for a decade or so. And lawyers have been posting angry responses, defensive responses, and then finding themselves subject to a disciplinary action because in the process they reveal confidential client information about their representation, right? That, so they start arguing and saying, no, I didn't um, overcharge you. In fact, you still owe me money. Or if you hadn't confessed your crime to the police before you asked for a lawyer, it would have been easier to get you off, get, get an acquittal or something like that. And so this really can create problems. And we've had a number of state ethics opinions and state disciplinary actions around the country in recent years about this. And so now the ABA has stepped in to address the issue. So let's take a look at the, our slides. And I have pulled out for you what I think is the biggest takeaway from um, Formal Ethics Opinion 496. A negative online review, I'm quoting here, alone does not meet the requirements of permissible disclosure in self-defense under Model Rule 1.6b5. I'll talk about that in a moment. And even if it did, an online response that discloses information relating to a client's representation or that could lead to discovery of confidential information would exceed any disclosure permitted under this rule. In other words, there's really nothing you're going to say to defend against a criticism if it, um, that's about the representation that's fair game to say that falls under any exception. And so the big takeaway, if you get a question on the MPRE or on my final exam about a lawyer responding to a negative uh, and, uh, and let's say unfair or untrue client complaint, complaint from a former client on Avo or Yelp or something like that or Google, um, that will violate model rule 1.6. Now remember that 1.6 is our confidentiality rule. It's very broad and we'll take a look at it in a moment. But the, the part of it that really matters for purposes of this ethics opinion is the exceptions. Section B of model rule 1.6 sets forth like seven kind of exceptions or categories of exceptions where a lawyer actually can disclose confidential client information even without the client's consent or over the client's objection. Examples are to save a life or to, um, uh, you know, to prevent someone from being killed, uh, to comply with a court order, um, to check for conflicts of interest and so forth. The one that, the operative one here is the fifth one, which allows lawyers to disclose confidential information if they're to fend off criminal charges um, related to a representation, um, to settle a fee dispute, to establish what kind of fees they're owed. And also um, the most importantly, quote, to establish a claim or defense on behalf of the lawyer in a controversy between the lawyer and the client. And so what's been happening in recent years is lawyers who are facing disciplinary actions for their online replies, which are sometimes, by the way, scathing and rather entertaining, have 
invoked this provision 1.6b5 as their defense saying well look there is a controversy between me and my client it's taking place online they haven't sued me for malpractice yet or filed a grievance but we have a, a live controversy going on they posted a complaint and so i should be able to avail myself of this exception and the big takeaway from this is the aba says no the ex exception does not apply to online criticisms or complaints now, it does concede at the outset that attorneys are frequently the subjects of online criticisms and negative reviews. And Model Rule 1.6a, though, prohibits lawyers from disclosing any information relating to the client's information, even the fact that you, uh, the fact of the representation, that could, or information that would lead to discovery of confidential information by another. And so if you're arguing with a client about who owes who money or whether it's the client's fault that they lost their case because they didn't um, show up for their court appearance or something like that, that's confidential information that you would have to find some, it is normally prohibited unless the client authorizes you to make the disclosure or you can fit it under one of the seven exceptions in section B. And this ethics opinion is saying, this area doesn't fit under any of the exceptions. So the best practice, the ABA says, is don't respond at all. It's going to be very tempting. You're going to feel indignant and defensive, of course, um, uh, to something that's uh, negative or unfair. But um, the, the, the best rule uh, of thumb is just don't respond or respond in another forum. Call the client and say, I think this was unfair and you should take that down or something like that. That's what you really should do. Don't post a response. Why? Because as you know yourself, if you've ever read these, it's very entertaining to read um, uh, uh, arguments they go on like between a restaurant owner and a dissatisfied patron or something like that where they're hurling insults at each other and so forth and so you risk this more people reading it because the lawyer is actually trashing the client right back and then the client it's just going to escalate and that's the other thing is that you're basically inviting more responses so if you scorch the client the client is going to come back and and um and be even more upset and more accusatory and and so forth and the situation will just spiral out of control now Here's a couple of things that are okay. It is okay to ask the website or maybe the search engine host or somebody, whoever's responsible for moderating that content who could take it down if they had to, to get in touch with them and say that there are grounds for doing so. Like um, this person was never my client and they have me mixed up with another lawyer or they're simply, def this is defamatory and it's simply not true and so forth. Please take the comment down. And so if you get asked about that on a test question, uh, if a client, an unhappy former client posts a criticism online and you can convince the web host or uh, hosting service to take it down, that does not violate the rule that is proper or permissible. Um, if you do post any response at all, you cannot include any information related to the representation because that would violate the 1.6, the duty of confidentiality. So you can't say something like, I took this case as a favor. That violates the duty of confidentiality. I agreed to, I didn't even charge you as much as I normally charge other clients for this, or I worked um, a, a thousand hours on your case. I don't know what you're talking about, or I did a great job for you. Um, any of that is confidential information, is information about the representation and all that information is confidential until the client authorizes you to disclose it and they have not done that if they're uh, it sounds like if they're just attacking you now here's another thing that is okay to do you can post and some firms do this please contact our offices at such and such phone number so that we can address your concerns and try to resolve this matter and that's pretty bland and seems pretty harmless and that is okay if you are asked as a test question is it permissible for a lawyer to say um, please contact our offices so that we can um, talk about this or resolve this or address it, try to address it. Um, that is permissible under the rules. In practice, though, the ABA is warning you that if that 
follow-up phone call doesn't go well, there's a big risk or even likelihood the person is going to post even more criticisms of you saying they did contact you and that you were unhelpful or gave them a runaround or you had to talk to a secretary or associate or something like that. So um, there, there can be a downside or a risk even saying, please call our offices so we can address this offline, that the person may do that and then go back online and saying, so I called their office and, um, and they were rude to me or something like that. And the situation just continues to escalate. Um, another thing that is permissible is to say something like the professional considerations preclude a response or the rules of ethics um, do not permit me to respond to this or something like that. That's again, a fairly safe reply. And if you're being asked, could the lawyer face discipline for saying that I am for basically saying that as a response, I'm not allowed to respond, sorry. That is permissible. But again, remember that any reply could invite more angry responses. Yeah, I can just picture a former client saying, oh, now you're gonna be ethical or, oh, now you're worried about the rules of ethics or something and getting all sarcastic with you. So watch out for that, that it might still have been better to just say nothing at all. Now, what happens if it's not your client? What, would, what if it's the opposing party or opposing counsel who's saying um, this lawyer is terrible and never responds to things and you can't settle a case with him and so forth? Responding to online criticisms from an opposing party or opposing counsel would inherently involve disclosing confidential information and admitting that you represented this client, talking about the merits of the case or something like that. And so at the least, um, that requires your client's authorization. And the, this ethics opinion basically says, seems to say you have to get express authorization to make disclosures online because in this type of super public forum where things are permanently available and can be read by the whole world and so forth. In other words, they, they say that the opinion says in 496, you should discuss with your client what you're going to say. And I hope as you think through this scenario that um, it's usually the lawyer who should be telling the client, don't talk about your case online, please. And now the client should really be telling you, please don't respond to the other side online. Just pick up the phone and call opposing counsel and say, this is completely unfair what you said and so forth. You should take your comment down. And so you have other avenues of recourse without trying to kind of um, uh, relitigate a matter in a Yelp review or something. Okay, here's a review question to see if you've been paying attention. Uh, model rule 1.6 B5 permits disclosure of confidential client information, quote, to establish a claim or defense on behalf of the lawyer in a controversy between the lawyer and the client. So the question is, if based on what we've been saying, would this include disclosures made in an online response to refute a negative, unfair client review? Yes or no? This is supposed to be an easy question. And if you aren't sure about the answer, you might have stopped listening at some point and you really should rewatch um, this video uh, to, to get that clear. And that concludes our lecture about ABA Model, um, ethics Opinion 496, which is about the duty of confidentiality and the dangers of ethical violations when you're responding to criticisms or complaints from um, online from clients or anyone else about your legal representation.